So today we're starting a new section or a new unit. It's on waves. So there are two types of waves. But before we go into the types, let's just pause a minute and let's talk about <clears throat> what the concept of waves reminds us of in our everyday life. Usually when we think of waves, we think of water waves. Um, but the type of water wave that I want you to think of is not the type on the ocean, but rather imagine having a, a calm pond somewhere and in that pond or perhaps a small lake you drop a rock or throw a rock into the center. Now you have ripples being created on the water and those ripples will uh, move or traverse radially or concentrically outwards from the disturbance. And we, we've all seen that before, right? The waves travel outwards and they grow. And if you look at them kind of like from the side, they would look like that. And they would be, you know, moving in this direction here. So they're traveling. These are, this is a wave disturbance on the water. There's also waves in terms of my voice is creating a disturbance in the air and that sound wave is traveling. But there's also waves that could be created uh, by an earthquake that's shaking the ground. So there's many different types of waves, but in terms of the technical terms, we need to recognize there that there is a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Now, transverse waves, if I drew a picture of it here, but before I do, let me just write down the definition. And it's that the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction. Okay, whereas longitudinal waves, the oscillations are parallel to the direction. And let me now draw this out for you. So here is transverse. It would kind of look like this. Notice that it's traveling in this direction, but the oscillations are up and down. So this is the direction, but these are the oscillations are up and down. Those are perpendicular to the uh, uh, direction. Whereas a longitudinal Those ones, <coughs> it's a bit harder to draw. So the wave, first I draw big distances, then I start to reduce the distance. And now I start to increase the distance slowly.
And then, of course, we do the same thing again. We start to decrease the distance. I kind of messed up on the end there. But essentially, what you see here is that this is a region of compression here, and this is a region of elongation there. So in this case, the direction of travel is in the same direction as the transverse wave, but the areas of compression and decompression are here and here, right? So this, your oscillations, are parallel to the direction. Oscillation. There we go. So those are the two definitions of the types of waves. So the next thing I want to take a look at is the characteristics of a wave. The first thing let's look at is the amplitude. It's the distance from this center line or from zero to the crest. Now that's that's a word we don't I haven't talked about yet. And crest that's a crest. And this part here at the bottom <coughs> is a trough. But the amplitude is the distance either from the center, which is you can consider that to be zero, to the t to the highest crest, that's the amplitude, or from the center to the to the to the lowest point or the trough. Those two those two distances are should be the same, and as long as the wave is steady, is not decaying, and the amplitude is a length, which is in meters. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the wavelength. Now the wavelength is one full cycle. So that means if you think about this wave, if it's like traveling like this, then if at, when we're at this point, okay, we're going, if, if I put arrows on this guy, you could think of it like the oscillation is tending up at this point. Now at this point, it's actually tending down. So that's not a full wavelength. We have to get to where we were before. So at this point here, now we're tending up again. So the distance of one wavelength is equal to the distance from here all the way to there. That is the distance of one wavelength. Now it doesn't have to be from center to center. It could also be from crest to crest. In other words, let's say for example we took this distance um, here and then to this point here now, one wavelength would be the distance from there to there. These two distances are the same. In other words, it doesn't matter if we measure from here to here or if we measure from here to here. It's the same distance. It's one wavelength. Now, the wavelength is also a distance and the wavelength is, uh, we use this Greek letter called lambda. And it's measured in meters. So um, what else do we know about this wave? Well, the other thing that we know about the wave is that it has a velocity. It's traveling in this in this case I have to pick a direction so I'll say that it's traveling in this direction and so V will stand for velocity and we've studied this before we know that velocity is in um, 
meters per second. There is also another characteristic of the wave, and that is its frequency. Okay? And frequency is denoted with the letter F. Now, what is the frequency and what are the units of it? Well, frequency is in cycles per second. It means that if you were standing, let's say, at this point, let me change colors here. Uh, let's go with like this green. If you were standing at this point, how many of these wavelengths, because it's moving in this direction, how many of these wavelengths would pass you by in one second? One wavelength is equal to one cycle. So that means if one wavelength passed you in one second, that means the frequency would be one cycle per second. Now, the word cycle we don't we don't we can't express that we just say it's one and we, we use the unit one over seconds you can also say seconds to the negative one, negative one usually when we say seconds we don't write sec by the way so let's kind of correct that um i usually write one over s or s to the power of negative one however both of these are not what is used. Instead, we use the unit called hertz. That means one hertz is equal to one cycle per second. But the, the unit for hertz, we don't write the full word out, we write capital H, lowercase z. That is a hertz. That's a unit. And interpret that in your brain as cycles per second. Or in this specific case, you could say wavelengths per second. And that is a unit of frequency. OK? Now. There is a corresponding um, kind of a uh, another term which we need to understand that is related to frequency, and that is capital T or the period. The period, so we didn't actually write this down here, so let's actually write this down. Okay. Oops. Frequency is the number of cycles or in this case wavelengths per second. Now period on the other hand, so we'll write we'll write an F here. Period is the time for one cycle. Or in this case or wavelength. It's the time for one cycle, or the time it would take for one wavelength to pass. So again, if we go back to the diagram, if we're standing on this green line, and we said it takes one second for one wavelength to pass us, then the period and the frequency would be equal. Okay, It makes more sense if I change it from one to another number. So let's use an example. Okay, So let's use an example. Let's say that 
there is a frequency and as we're standing at this point okay we have a frequency of two Hertz now what does that mean it means that we could say therefore we could say there are two wavelengths two full waves per second so in other words if I was to actually draw it out let's let's draw it out I, this picture up here is not that so let's say that um, we draw this out let's draw two wavelengths so let's start here okay there's one and there's two so from here to here is one and then another one that means all of this oops let's 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 back that out here all of this happens in one second okay so that is a two Hertz frequency now ask yourself this <clears throat> what is the re what is the meaning of the period period by the way is represented by this capital T the period is the time for one cycle well if this whole thing takes one second then how long does one cycle take and how long is one cycle well this distance here is one cycle it's pretty obvious I think at this point that you can tell that if this whole thing is one second therefore half of it should be half a second and that is correct if you if you were able to, to deduce that just by looking at what I drew now there's a relationship we can establish notice that the free if the frequency is two and the, therefore the period is one half a second and the relationship if you can maybe you might have to draw a few more to recognize it but I'll put it here it's that the frequency is the reciprocal of the period okay so if you reciprocate two you get one half and by the way if you know the opposite of this is therefore the period is equal to the reciprocal of the frequency right that's a mathematically very easy to deduce so now that we know the relationship between frequency and period let's write down the most important equation that we have for waves and that is the wave equation And you can use this to solve a variety of different uh, problems. And the wave equation is the relationship between velocity and frequency and wavelength. And the equation is V equals frequency times wavelength. That is the wave equation very simple but extremely useful now if we look at the units what's the units of velocity that's a meter per second what's the units of frequency now I know I know I said it's Hertz but remember what is Hertz Hertz is 1 over seconds or seconds to the power of negative 1 therefore if we write here 1 over seconds for frequency and therefore w wavelength is a distance measured in meters well the units work out okay so there it is there is the famous wave equation the velocity and you can manipulate this right to whatever way you want to solve for so um, for example I could say that frequency is equal to velocity divided by wavelength or I could say 
uh, wavelength is equal to uh, freak velocity divided by frequency. Doesn't matter. You can don't memorize all three. That's kind of ridiculous. The mathematics to go. This is the this is the one that you that you should memorize, and that's the wave equation.